everyone, welcome to my third and final day in and around London and my camera has got charging it now which is very very good because I'm at the XL Arena for the London Classic Car Show. Classic cars, it is not just so. This is Evo's absolutely outstanding stand. They have this there, this is their evolution of the hypercar. Porsche 918 Spyder, arguably one of the greatest hypercars. Piatti Veyron W16 quad turbo. This is my third Veyron now in three days. Every single Veyron I've seen has been a 16.4. Arguably the first hypercar. Going back into the 90s. I'm not a fan of the green, but it's it's all right. <laughs> Jaguar XJ220. And if I spin you around, we have a Ferrari F40, of which I can assure you there are many F40s here today. Lamborghini Countach and quite possibly the first supercar this gorgeous green acid green Lamborghini Miura it's from it's here on loan from Joe Macari performance cars they actually have a stand here as well and I promise you that stand will not let me down. stand there a very very reputable dealership in West London so they can't afford to let people down either so they brought the only full carbon bodied Enzo in the world just take that in the only full carbon bodied Enzo in the world. It has a red interior. And instead of the standard Ferrari logo on the back, it has Enzo Ferrari. As well as that F40, but you know, meh. That's alright. But look at this, it has a purple engine cover. Also they have Ferrari 512BB. And opposite them is this 4GT40 Le Mans. So yeah.
Tras Sur. This is the wing squad on the Prindeville stand. Prindeville is also a dealership in West London. And they've brought well, I'm going to. this gorgeous GT3R and GT3. With Prindeville's infamous all decked out carbon G Wagon. This is quite a car. I apologise for the man coming over the speakers. This is Aston Martin's official stand. Obviously, Aston Martin's official stand has to be the best stand. So they brought a 177. This is the first one I've seen ever. But it's the first one I've seen even in pictures with those wheels. Which I like, I like those wheels. Also, Aston Martin brought this DB5. I think it's a DB5. And some th those as well, whatever they are. which gives me a good opportunity to talk to you about this frankly ridiculous 7.3 litre V12 under that carbon intake. Seven point three litres produces I think it's 750 brake horsepower somewhere in that region. There's the chassis number, the chassis number 17765. I think they made a hundred of these, so it's number 65 out of a hundred. Aluminium foil obviously underneath the bonnet to aid cooling in the engine. And all 177s made are left hand drive. This here is another pretty little thing on the Aston Martin stand. It's a DB... It's a DB3S racing car. That music's got very loud all of a sudden. This is very nice, this Aston. Decided to up it up a bit by bringing this 599 GTO, which is one of their newer cars. That is a stunning spec. I think it's Rosso Fuoco, fire red in Italian, but you may have to correct me because I don't know all my Ferrari colours. The matte black roof suits it so well. And this is right hand drive as well, which is rare. Thank you. 
seen one of these in a long time. Familiarity, if I can speak right, familiarity for me. This is the Cheshire Classic Car Club. They've brought along this gorgeous bright orange Miura, as well as an SL and this Corvette Stingray. here is a McLaren F1 GTR in Harrods livery but this is not a long tail I am aware that there is a long tail here and that there are also multiple other McLaren F1s which I am going to have to hunt down somewhere now I'll be honest there's a GT3 RS 4.0 over there I was obsessing over that and I completely didn't realise there was a LaFerrari here. This is the Silverstone Auctions stand, but that car belongs to the Prindeville Supercar Dealership of West London. to a Sale, not for auction for 2.394 million pounds. Wow, that is a lot of money. There's a Kuntash there as well.
I think it is this generation, GT3 RS, but this isn't the 4.0 though. This is a 3.8, but it still has that ginormous wing. The queue goes right the way around <laughs> this building and it nearly goes outside. It's a huge queue. Oh god. Oh, we're moving. Finally. This is one of the first McLarens. This is XP3. If you know your McLarens, then you'll know XP it means experimental prototype. And this is number three, this is the third one. This is stunning. This was one of the first customer cars. With its doors up, that's your luggage space, that's all you get. Gordon Murray designed it with a three seat layout. With a driver at the front and two passengers either side. And with a gold lined engine bay as well, which is designed to aid in cooling. This is one of the GTR Le Mans race cars that was built. This one's in Tag Hewer livery. And Silver XP3 is just through there. If I can get XP3 in. It says on the side. The GTR race cars only had one seat in the centre though. They didn't have three seats like the road cars. Here is one of the GTRs uh, with the front and wheels stripped off it so you can look at all the, the inner workings. This GTR does have the extra seats so obviously whoever has bought it has specced them in so that he can race. Oh no, it's just one extra seat to the left of the driver. The reason it keeps saying BMW on it is because it is powered by BMW's V12. Lastly, the last car in here is this long tail, which is essentially an F1 GTR but with um, more aero. I suppose you could say more downforce. Obviously it's so called because its tail is longer than the one on the standard GTR, such as that one. This is Gulf livery. How many McLaren F1s is that? There's XP3, the black one, that's two, three in this GTR, four in that GTR, and this fifth one. Plus the Harrods livery, F1 GTR, that's six in total, and I believe there is one at the exit as well, which I look forward to seeing. stand where they've brought along this gorgeous deep red carbon 
Noble M600 Carbon Sport. This is gorgeous and that black interior with red stitching as well. That is gorgeous. This is interesting, it's a Mercedes AMG GT S that people are being allowed to draw on, or at least I hope they're allowed to draw on it. I can see some big names on here. TFJJ being highlighted there, and the luxurious cars I can see. Shout out to those two. And anyone else, if I can find anyone else's um, signature on here. Nothing stands out. I think I'll sign it. The pen is at the back, so let's go and get that. Where would you want to do? Let's go down there, I think. Uh. <laughs> this is harder than it looks. Car. Videogra. We're acting over someone else's. <laughs> I didn't just manage to fit it all on the door. Oh well. Thanks. I can see a hashtag, it's white noise there as well. People in the way of the 599 GTO. to Scalietti, a car which I have very mixed feelings for. This spec is alright, there's quite a bit of carbon in there, but I wouldn't get those wheels though. I believe this blue Bugatti is a Type 35, I think. It looks something like that. That's an Ultima GTR as well. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> this is the Chevrolet Corvette owner stand. And of course, they brought a brand new Stingray along with them because that's what you do when you have a car club and extra space on your stand. Uh, 
I don't know what it is, but Prinderville must be being lazy now. They've left a 612 on a California on a lorry and instead of bothering to get them up, just open the side and park the lorry in here. Oh dear. 575 here. I think it's a 575. Yeah, 575. Um, blacked out Challenger Hellcat. That's nice. As well as the UK's Marcos Owners Club. Marcos being a very small British sports car manufacturer, they didn't last long. But this was probably one of their greatest hits. I can't even remember what this what this is called. It'll come back to me. I don't like that. It's too long. Also, a Porsche 911 GT3 RS 997 has got nothing on wings such as this. Look at that wing! That, that is a wing. <laughs> if I'm right, this is a Pikes Peak hill climb racer. That's certainly what the wing and giant splitter would suggest to me. Wow, that is aero.